Get ready for unique, rare, and little-known treasures from the golden age of radio. You're listening to The Amazing World of Radio with Adam Graham. Welcome to The Amazing World of Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. So tomorrow, uh, February 12th, is Abraham Lincoln's birthday, and we're going to bring you an episode of songs that Lincoln sang and were sung about him. This was presented by Oscar Brand, who hosted a program of folk music on WNYC from 1945 on for uh, 70 years, which is the longest time that a program has aired with a single host. This episode originally aired April the 4th, 1961, so let's go ahead and take a listen. Old Abe Lincoln, he come out of the wilderness, out of the wilderness, out of the wilderness. Old Abe Lincoln, he come out of the wilderness many long years ago. Old Jeff Davis, he tore down the government, tore down the government, tore down the government. Old Abe Lincoln, he tore down the government many long years ago. But old Abe Lincoln, he built it right back again, built it right back again, built it right back again. Or old Jeff Davis, he built it right back again many long years ago. And of course the question is, who did it? Did Jeff Davis try to tear down the government? Did Lincoln try to tear down the government? By the way, I'm Oscar Brand, and tonight we'll present a special program, an attempt to describe a man by the songs he knew and some of the songs that people sang about him. Let's go back to Jeff Davis and Abe Lincoln. Sometimes they sang a song in the North that went... Now Lincoln rides a white horse, Jeff Davis rides a mule. Lincoln is a gentleman, and Davis is a fool. And sometimes in the South, they sang it. Jeff Davis rides a white horse, Lincoln rides a mule. Jeff Davis is a gentleman, Lincoln is a fool. The question of which was right is one which scholars have debated for many, many years. But there were two gentlemen in America at that time, and one of them certainly was old Abe Lincoln. He was born in 1809 in a section of backwoods society in Kentucky, which was especially noted for the fact that they had more convictions in one month for manslaughter, drunkenness, and public disorder than in any other section in the county or in the state. Abe Lincoln was brought up in that kind of atmosphere, in the bush, splitting rails and living poor. But the songs they knew in the frontier in those days are songs which are still sung in America today as they were sung hundreds and hundreds of years ago in England. Barbara Allen was his mother's favorite, but she sang to the children for lullabies, for fun, or just while she was working. Such beautiful songs as the old ballad of Lord Thomas and Fair Ellender. And we'll hear it sung by Jean Ritchie, probably with the same swoops, slides, glides as the mountain people like Jean Ritchie who sang it many, many years ago during Lincoln's day. Oh, mother, oh, mother, come riddle it down. Come riddle three hearts as one. Oh, must a merry fair Ellender say, or bring the brown girl home. Oh, the brown girl, she has houses and lands. Fair Ellender, she has none. Well, the best advice I can give you, my son, is go bring me the brown girl home. He rode and he rode on his milk white steed. He tingled her bell with his cane. No one so ready as fair under herself to a rise and bid him come in. Oh, what's the news, Lord Thomas, she cried. What's the news you bring to me? I've come to ask. 
dress you to my wedding Now what do you think of me? Oh mother, oh mother, come riddle it down Come riddle three hearts as one Oh must I go Lord Thomas's wedding Or stay at home and mourn Oh the brown girl, she's got business there You know that you've got none So the best advice I can give you, my daughter Is to stay at home and mourn She dressed herself in a snow white dress Her maid she dressed in green And every town that they rode through They took her to be some queen She rode till she came to Lord Thomas's door She pulled all in her rein No one so ready as Lord Thomas himself To a rise and bid her come in He took her by the lily white hand He led her through the hall He seated her down in a rocking chair There amongst those ladies all Is this your bride, Lord Thomas, she cried She looks so wonderful brown You once could have had a maiden as fair As ever the sun shined on Dispraise her not, fair Ellender, he cried Dispraise her not to me For I think more of your little finger Than of her whole body Well, the brown girl having a little pin knife Its blade being keen and sharp Betwixt the long ribs and the short Pierced fair Ellender to the heart Oh, what's the matter, Lord Thomas, he cried You look so pale and wine You used to have as rosy a color As ever the sun shined on Oh, are you blind, Lord Thomas, she cried Or is it you cannot see And don't you see my own heart's blood Come a-trinkling down to my knee Part of the long and beautiful ballad of Lord Thomas and Fair Ellender, sung for you by Gene Ritchie, who, like Abe Lincoln, was also from Kentucky. These long, beautiful ballads whiled away the hours when it was dark and only the light from the fire or a few candles lit Abraham Lincoln and his family's way. And many, many years later, when he was asked about his music, he said, I only know two tunes. And when he was asked, is one of them not Hail Columbia? He said, yes, it must be because I have to stand up and take off my hat when I hear that one. And they said, well, what's the other one? He said, I don't know, but I always sit for it. But actually, as is pointed out in a book called Songs Lincoln Loved, put out by Duel Sloan and Pierce, the songs that Lincoln loved fill this book with indications for at least six or seven other books of the same. Even in a society where you were not allowed to play the fiddle, because fiddle playing was considered devil's work. They said the devil lives in a fiddle in those days. When he got to Indiana, he would pick up his jaws harp, or even his harmonica, and play for the play parties, and dance and sing with the rest of them. One of his favorites in those days was Skip to My Lou, which had come from an old English hymn called Give Up the World. Let's hear Peter Seeger and the old song Skip to My Lou. Can't get a red bird, a blue bird'll do. Can't get a red bird, a blue bird'll do. Skip it to Maloo, my darling. Hey, hey, skip to Maloo. Hey, hey, skip to Maloo. Hey, hey, skip to Maloo. Skip to Maloo, my darling. Well, it's going to Texas two by two. Going to Texas two by two, going to Texas two by 
to is skip it to my loo, my darling. Hey, hey, skip it to my loo. Hey, hey, skip it to my loo. Hey, hey, skip it to my loo. Skip it to my loo, my darling. Two by two, skip it to my loo, my darling. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Skip it to my loo, my darling. Red wagon painted blue, a little red wagon painted blue, a little red wagon painted blue. Skip to my loo, my darling. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Hey, hey, skip to my loo. Skip to my loo, my darling. Now cats in the cream jar, what'll I do? Cats in the cream jar, what'll I do? Cats in the cream jar, what'll I do? Skip to my loo, my darling. Hey, hey, hey. Skip to my Lou, one of the songs that Abraham Lincoln knew, sung, played, and danced to. He was supposed to be a pretty, pretty proficient fella in such social activities as stringing beans, apple cuttings, and corn shuckings. And you know, in the old corn shuckings, a fellow who found a red ear of corn was allowed to kiss the girl of his choice. Well, they said of Abraham Lincoln that he was a sly one. He used to bring his own red ear of corn and slip it into the corn shuckings and then pick out the girl he wanted to. And sometimes you get to singing with him, too. Songs like the one I'm going to sing for you now with Gene Ritchie. You got to think of him waving his red ear of corn and singing a song that I'm sure you all know, Paper of Pins. I'll give to you a paper of pins and that's the way my love begins. If you will marry, marry me, if you will marry me. I'll not accept your paper of pins if that's the way your love begins. And I'll not marry, marry you, no, I'll not marry you. I'll give to you a coach and four that you may ride from door to door If you will marry, marry me, if you will marry me I'll not accept a coach and four that I may ride from door to door And I'll not marry, marry you, no, I'll not marry you I'll give to you a dress of green that you may shine as any queen If you will marry, marry me, if you will marry me I'll not accept your dress of green that I may shine as any queen And I'll not marry, marry you, no, I'll not marry you I'll give to you a dress of red stitched all around with a golden thread If you will marry, marry me, if you will marry me I'll not accept your dress of red stitched all around with a golden thread And I'll not marry, marry you, no, I'll not marry you I'll give to you a blue silk gown with golden tassels to the ground If you will marry, marry me, if you will marry me I'll not accept your blue silk gown with golden tassels to the ground And I'll not marry, marry you, and I'll not marry you I'll give to you the keys to my chest so you can have money at your request If you will marry, marry me, if you will marry me I will accept the keys to your chest so I can have money at my request And I will marry you, yes you, yes I will marry you Well, you love coffee and I love tea, you love my money, you don't love me So I won't marry, marry you, no I won't marry you then I guess I'll be an old maid I'll take my stool and sit in the shade And I'll not marry at all, at all And I'll not marry at all
Of course, most courting songs had happy endings, aside from that of the paper pins that I just sang with Gene Ritchie. There's a song called I'm a Pilgrim and a Stranger, and it's said that Lincoln first heard that song when his family had already moved from Indiana to Illinois. He was near New Salem, walking in the woods, when he heard a young voice, a young girl's voice, singing I'm a Pilgrim and a Stranger, which was a very popular hymn in those days. And then when he got into the church, it was sung again, he saw the lady who had sung it. Her name was Ann Rutledge, Ann Mays Rutledge, who, like himself, had moved from Indiana to Kentucky, from Kentucky to Indiana. It was the first time he ever saw her. It's possible he was a very religious man that in the days after her death, he turned to such songs as I'm a Pilgrim and a Stranger, for he was no stranger to beautiful songs of faith. In fact, his words point that out. Beset by difficulties and apparent failures, Lincoln's faith never failed him. He said, I believe the will of God prevails. Without him, all human reliance is vain. Without the assistance of that divine being, I cannot succeed. With that assistance, I cannot fail. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I can only tarry for a night. Do not detain me, for I am going where holy fountains are ever flowing. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I can only tarry for a night. I shall journey to a city where the Lord provides the only light. There's only gladness and there's no crying for there's no sadness and there's no dying. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I can only tarry for a night. Oh, the glory will be shining, and my heart is longing to be there. Through all this country, so dark and dreary, for years I've wandered. Forlorn and weary, I'm a pilgrim and a stranger. I can only tell you for a night. I'm a pilgrim and a stranger, the old song that Lincoln first heard sung by Ann Rutledge, even before he'd met her. At 16, he was about six feet in height. He was long, thin, and gawky. He was fairly popular, but he wasn't at ease with girls, only with men and boys. But they say that in later years, when he became a famous man, there were hundreds of middle-aged women who told their children about how they were Lincoln's girlfriends. And in a way, they were because there were many kissing games and courting songs at the meetings at which Lincoln spent a lot of his time. In fact, when The Lonesome Train was written by Millard Lampell and Earl Robinson, Millard Lampell, who's The Wall, is now on Broadway, they emphasized to a great deal the high-spirited quality of Lincoln, the way he could dance and the excitement he brought with him from The Lonesome Train, the square dance section. Then to the 
Square dance section from the Lonesome Train. And we'll return again in just about 30 seconds with more of our profile of Abraham Lincoln in music. How would you like to be an economist? Or better still, an economic engineer? Let's suppose that you are one and you're given a job. This job is to set a town of 12,000 people on its feet. There's a hitch, of course, otherwise you wouldn't be asked to step in. The problem is that the town, though it lies on the seashore, is in an isolated tropical country. One good thing you discover when you arrive is that just offshore are shrimp. Here, you are sure, is the beginning of a big industry and the beginning of economic recovery. You talk to the citizens and learn that they have a fleet of shrimp boats, a fleet that consists of two decrepit old boats. They had thought of exporting shrimp, but that takes ice. And making ice takes power plants. Power plants need water, and skilled technicians, then schools to educate more technicians, and money, more money than the town has. This you can get, you can borrow. So what you first decide is, get the money and spend it, thousands and thousands of dollars. Then as the whole picture crowds in on you, you think, the whole thing's impossible. But finally, after much study, you realize that it actually can be done and you settle yourself to the long, long haul, thinking, make haste, but carefully. Throughout the world, this is what the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the World Bank, is doing. It is an agency of the United Nations, which is man's best hope for economic development, for peace, and for justice. They say that Lincoln's favorite play party game, the game that you played and danced to, was Old Sister Phoebe. And to play it, any number of boys and girls, odd or even, would join hands, circle to the left upon, around one girl who was in the center of the ring. She was Sister Phoebe. And she'd hold in her hand a coonskin cap, any one of the boys. And out as the circle moved around, she'd decide on whom to bestow her favor. Sister Phoebe, how happy were we the day we sat under the juniper tree, the juniper tree. Hi ho, hi ho, the juniper tree. Hi ho. Place this hat on your head, it will keep your head warm, and take a sweet kiss. It will do you no harm, but a great deal of good. I know, I know, a great deal of good, I know. Oh, Sister Phoebe, how happy was we, the day we sat under the juniper tree. And around and around we go, we go, and around and around we go. When Lincoln and his family moved into Illinois, things were a little different. He was growing up, become a lawyer. But nevertheless, there was plenty of time to poke fun at the state in which he now lived. And Lincoln was a fun-poking man. They say he was one of the most popular men on the frontier because he always knew when to laugh. He could sing his songs, for instance, like the fun poking song of the state of Illinois. Way down upon the Wabash, such a land was never known. If Adam had crossed over it, the land he'd surely own. He'd think it was the garden he played in when a boy. And he'd straight pronounce it Eden in the state of Illinois. So move your family westward, good health you will enjoy, and rise to wealth and honor in the state of Illinois. 
'Twas here the Queen of Sheba came with Solomon of old, and a cargo of pomegranates and ivory and gold. And when she seen this lovely land, her heart was filled with joy, and straightway said, "I'd like to be the Queen of Illinois." So move your family westward, good health you will enjoy, and rise to wealth and honor in the state of Illinois. She's bounded by the Wabash, the Missouri, and the lakes. There's milk sick in her swampy lands, and in her fields there's snakes. But these are slight diversions which take not from the joy of living in that guardian spotless state of Illinois. So move your family westward, good health you will enjoy, and rise to wealth and honor in the state of Illinois. Away up to the northward, right on the borderline, a greatly settled city, Chicago, you will find. Her men are all like Abelard, her women like Heloise. So cross that Shawnee Ferry to the state of Illinois. So move your family westward, good health you will enjoy, and rise to wealth and honor in the state of Illinois. And rise to wealth and honor is exactly what Abraham Lincoln did. At first, an unsuccessful shopkeeper, he began to become more and more successful at his law practice and to meet more and more cultured people and in a way to hear songs that he ordinarily wouldn't have heard along the frontier. When the first piano arrived in Decatur, Illinois in 1849, it came with Mrs. Jane Martin Johns, and she took up temporary residence in a place called the Macon House, which was a favorite stopover of all the lawyers who travel the 8th Judicial District Circuit. And Lincoln himself took off his jacket and helped put that piano into her living room. And then she stayed and played some songs. And all around, the lawyers stood with their jackets off and the galluses showing, listening to such songs as Washington's March, Haste to the Wedding, the Wood Up Quick Step, The Lament of the Irish Emigrant, Old Dan Tucker, Lucy Long, Jim Crow, Rocked in the Cradle of the Deep, and a song that Lincoln especially favored called Kathleen Mavourneen, a song only recently written by F.W.N. Crouch in those days. Let's hear the rendition by John McCormick, made quite a while ago, but in my estimation, one of the loveliest of all. The great one is breaking, the horn of the hunter is heard on the hill. The dark from her light wing, the bright you is shaking, Kathleen Mavourneen, what slumbering. Awake from thy 
slumbers the blue mountains glow in the sun's golden light. Ah, where is the spell that once hung on thy numbers? Arise in thy beauty, thou star of my night. Arise in thy beauty, thou star of my night. Mavornin, Mavornin, my sad tears are falling to think that from every and I must part. It may be for years, and it may be. Then why art thou silent, Kathleen? No. John McCormick singing Kathleen Mavornin, which Lincoln heard back in 1849, the singing of Mrs. Jane Martin Johns. She said about Lincoln, when she saw him then, that he was a polished gentleman, very well dressed, and she commented particularly on his shawl as being rich in texture and fashionable in color. And that was Lincoln, the successful attorney, come a long ways from his backwoods beginnings and his way of dress. But whatever kind of clothes he was wearing, and however high his office, Lincoln loved the Negro minstrel song so much in vogue in his day. Whenever he was sad, he could get happy just by hearing a rollicking nonsense song. His very closest friend, Ward Hill Lehman, was a banjo picker. And they say that when Lincoln came to speak at Gettysburg, sad and despondent over the proximity of all those graves, he said to Ward Lehman, Ward, play me that buzzing song. And Ward Lehman played him the blue tail fly the old minstrel song that's still popular today, especially because of the singing of Burl Ives. When I was young, I used to wait on the boss and give him his plate and pass the bottle when he got dry and brush away the blue tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. And when he'd ride in the afternoon, I'd follow after with a hickory broom. The pony being rather shy, when bitten by a blue tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. One day he ride around the farm. The flies so numerous they did swarm. One chance to bite him on the thigh. The devil take the boot tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. The pony run, he jump, he pitch. He threw my master in the ditch. He died and the jury wondered why. The verdict was the blue tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. They lay him under a simmon tree. His epitaph is there to see. Beneath this stone I'm forced to lie. 
Victim of a blue tail fly. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. My master's gone away. Burl Ives and the Blue Tail Fly, which was, as Sandberg has pointed out, one of the great favorites among the many minstrel songs that he knew of Abraham Lincoln. When Lincoln finally ran for president, many were the campaign songs written about him. He may have had his hand in some himself. Buchanan was the president, and one of the songs they wrote was to the tune of Villikins and his Dinah, even earlier known as or later known as Sweet Betsy from Pike. Lincoln had sung it in both its earlier versions and was probably capable of singing it in the new campaign version as well. There was an old Abram who lived in the West, esteemed by his neighbors the wisest and best. He left his log house without sigh or regret, for he knew that the folks had a white house to let. Or a lie, or a lie, or a lie. Old Abe trudged on into Washington Strait, entered the White House through the avenue gate. Buchanan and some cronies, the chaps from the South, were sitting there sadly all down in the mouth, singing to a lie, or a lie, or a lie. Well, old Abe received the knocker and he gave such a thump. Buck thought that the country'd run into a stump. He trembled all over, he turned deathly pale. That noise, I opine, must been made by a rail. Said Abe, Mr. Buchanan, I've come to say it. The Democrat dog has about had its day. Both parties are useless, the country don't need them. The one is for slavery and one is against freedom. Sing to a lie, a lie, or a lie. So Abe, he returned to his home in the West, leaving Buck and his cabinet greatly distressed. And if right and your country you'll only remember, I'll tell you the end. Come the following November, sing to a lie, or a lie, or a lie. song of the old Abraham, one of the campaign songs that Lincoln knew and were sung about him. By the way, a number of the songs that I'm singing tonight are available to anybody who wants them. If you'll just write to Oscar Brand at CBS and put the word words on the side so I'll know what you're asking about. I'll tell you which songs they are before we end our program. When Lincoln finally was elected, of course, that was the time when the South decided it was necessary to find themselves a new government apart from that of the central government of Washington, D.C. And to the tune of a song called The Irish Jaunting Car from Ireland, the Confederacy began to sing The Bunny Blue Flag.
while the South was singing the Bonnie Blue Flag and Maryland, my Maryland, the Yellow Rose of Texas and Dixie, the North was singing for Abraham, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and Abraham's Daughter. The volunteers are pouring in to join the fight for freedom, to swell the ranks of Union Blue, and nothing now can beat them. One nation and one flag we say, whomever war may slaughter, we're going down to Charleston town to fight for Abraham's daughter. Should you ask me who she is, Columbia is her name, sir. She is the child of Abraham, of Uncle Sam, the same, sir. And I belong to the infantry, and don't you think I oughta? We're going down to Vicksburg town to fight for Abraham's daughter. They say we have no officers, but ah, they are mistaken. And soon you'll see the rebels run with all the fuss they're making. McClellan is the man we mean, he'll show the foe no quarter. He's going down to Richmond town to fight for Abraham's daughter. He's going down to Richmond town to fight for Abraham's daughter. Abraham's Daughter, another of the songs that were sung for Abraham. Even in those days, he was becoming a legend. And while they might have talked about he was the rail splitter, and he was honest Abe, and a simple man, nevertheless, they had already exalted him higher than his actual stature. The campaign song that had helped get him elected to the tune of Rosin the Bow, Hurrah for the Choice of Our Nation, was already being sung as almost a paean and a hymn. Hurrah for the choice of our nation, our hero so brave and so true. We'll go for the great reformation, for Lincoln and liberty too. We'll go for the boy from Kentucky, the hero a Hoosier dumb through. The pride of the sucker so lucky for Lincoln and Liberty too. He'll show what by failing and mauling our rail splitting statesmen can do. The people are everywhere calling for Lincoln and Liberty too. So up with our banner, so glorious, the star-spangled red, white, and blue. We'll fight till our cause is victorious, for Lincoln and Liberty too. Our David's good sling is unerring, the slavocrat giant he slew. We'll go for the freedom preferring, for Lincoln and Liberty too. We'll go for the boy from Kentucky, the hero a Hoosier dumb through. The pride of the sucker so lucky, for Lincoln and Liberty too. For Lincoln and Liberty too. We're talking about the songs that Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, knew. And that was one of them, his great campaign song. There was a story that Lincoln, when he was on his way from the battlefield of Antietam, had asked Ward Lehman to sing him a jolly song. Now, while they were busy building Lincoln into a legend, there were plenty of newspapers and people who called him a man in monkey form or a gorilla with the speech of a man, all sorts of weird names. And when they heard about the fact that he might have asked Ward Lehman for a jolly song, he was excoriated by the newspapers for not having the sense to know the proper time and place for a happy, jolly song. 
It was necessary for Ward Lehman to issue many denials, saying, no, no, he asked for a sad song. But it was always strange that Lincoln had to deny asking for a jolly song when everyone knew how heavily upon his shoulders lay the whole progress of American democracy. One of his favorite songs was Dixie. Another was a southern song called Lorena, which was popular north and south. It's the kind of song that was popular in those days, and a man like Lincoln, who could tell a bawdy, vulgar joke, could still weep over the beauty and the sentiment of Lorena. Robert Shaw Corral singing for you, Lorena. It doesn't take much to finish up this story except to sing you a song that Lincoln never heard. Wilkes Booth came to Washington, an actor great was he, played at Ford's Theater, and Lincoln come to see. While Lincoln sees the play go on, his thoughts are running deep. His darling wife close by his side Is falling fast asleep Booth comes moving down the aisle He'd measured once before Passes Lincoln's bodyguard A nodding at the door Holds a dagger in his right hand And a pistol in his left And shoots poor Lincoln in the head And sends his soul to rest Booth runs back with boot and spur Across that backstage floor Mounts his trusty clay bank mare Saddle at the door The people all excited then Cry everywhere for a hand While some turn after John Wilkes Booth A cry and stop that man Poor Lincoln then is heard to say Before he goes to rest Of all the actors in this world I love John Wilkes Booth the best Booth shot Lincoln, and that's how the story ends in the last song in our program for tonight. We've been presenting a program of the songs that Lincoln knew, songs that were sung about him, and except for the last one, songs he himself had probably sung, for he was a singing man. And of course, 
with the assistance of Charles Friedman, our director, Joe Alonzo, our engineer, and Peter Rackman, our production coordinator, we'll be back here with My Little World of Music. See you again next week. Wilkes Booth came to Washington, an actor great was he, played at Ford's Theater, and Lincoln come to see you. While Lincoln sees the play go on, his thoughts are running deep. His darling wife close by his side is falling fast asleep. Booth comes moving down the aisle he'd measured once before. Passes Lincoln's bodyguard a nodding at the door. Holds a dagger in his right hand and a pistol in his left. And shoots poor Lincoln in the head. And sends his soul to rest Booth runs back with boot and spur Across that backstage floor Mounts his trusty clay bank mare Saddle at the door The people all excited then Cry everywhere for a hand While some turn after John Wilkes Booth A cry and stop that man Poor Lincoln then was heard to say Before he went to rest of all the actors in this world, I love John Wilkes Booth the best. Hurrah for the choice of our nation, our hero so brave and so true. We'll go for the great reformation, for Lincoln and liberty too. We'll go for the boy from Kentucky, the hero a Hoosier dumb through. Pride of the sucker so lucky for Lincoln and Liberty too. He'll show what by failing and mauling a rail splitting statesman can do. The people are everywhere calling for Lincoln and Liberty too. So up with our banner so glorious, the star spangled red, white, and blue. We'll fight till our cause is victorious for Lincoln and Liberty too. Our David's good sling is unerring, the slaveocrat giant he slew. We'll go for the freedom preferring for Lincoln and Liberty too. We'll go for the boy from Kentucky, the hero of Hoosier to Pride of the sucker so lucky for Lincoln and Liberty too, for Lincoln and Liberty too. Listen in again next week at this same time for the Oscar Brand Show. The Oscar Brand Show has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.
Welcome back. Well, a really interesting episode. I think you can learn a lot about someone and the times they lived in by listening to the type of music they listened to. I also had maybe a little bit more understanding of what they were going for in The Lonesome Train. Uh, When we played that episode of the Columbia Workshop, The Lonesome Train, I was just kind of baffled by the sudden transition to the square dancing. Now it makes a little bit more sense. I also really enjoyed the campaign songs and war songs. And it's kind of interesting how at that time they would take a tune that the enemy sang and uh, repurpose it using their own lyrics. It's like during this time period in American history. Maybe it goes back to the British as well that because during the Revolutionary War you would have songs or sung by one side repurposed by the other. Maybe it's a, a situation where there's a feeling like you can't let the enemy not only hold uh, important ground, but hold important songs to themselves. Our army has to conquer that tune, by gosh. But at any rate, I always love this sort of music. The traditional folk songs just provide so much insight into who people were and how they lived, and really can, uh, the best of them can still be really fun to listen to. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you will be with us in 12 days. We will be kicking off our spring series on February 23rd, and I hope you're with us for that. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.